It's another day, buddy. Another day closer to us leaving on the road and going traveling, crazy. Good morning, everybody. Whoa. Don't drop that on the new floors. Uh, still in the shop here, working our butts off, trying to get everything organized and ready for travel season and wrapping up a few final projects. Ugh, that's heavy. Ugh. Today's project, I am gonna fix up these broken stairs that I broke for Cruzy Bear. So there used to be straps that went from here to here on both sides and I busted them. So today we're gonna fix that. So I'm not sure if we're gonna utilize the same thing or if we're just gonna punch new ones in there. Let's try drilling out these rivets first and see how this works. Oh, that holds that piece on there. That's actually holding the step. <sighs> Let's go. So the whole point of those is when it's extended, it can't go flat. So that's full extension. That means it can't go any more than what those straps allow. And that's what happened before is, well, it snapped and then this thing turns into well, a slide. That, oh yeah, hold it way more than the last ones. Double cable is where it's at. Cruzy Bear, I fixed your stairs, bro. I fixed your stairs, buddy. They won't work right now because the van's up way too high, but I fixed them. I promise next time your 225 pound dad won't put his knee on it and wreck it, okay? We're gonna go through with some seam sealer here and just touch up some of the areas down underneath here. Like maybe getting up underneath this back lip here, just in case there is a small split where there could be any dust or whatever getting into. So we're just gonna run some seam sealer all across the inner wheel well, everywhere that I can reach back here, just in case. Good morning, sir. Good morning. <laughs> Amanda's out there running around doing some stuff for us. Uh, she's got the shop van today. I found out where my dust is coming in from. And against my better judgment, I think the only way to fix that problem is spray foam. So the insulation part worries me because insulation is also known to hold water sometimes. But spray foam is pretty damn decent because I think it's like a closed cell spray foam and i'm gonna pack that hole full because it's big enough for me to put my damn fist through and it's funny i went underneath the lift this morning i'm looking around when i was trying to seal up anything on the wheel and i looked over i put my arm up this cavity all the way up to my freaking elbow i'm like yeah that's the spot so we're gonna fill that one up today once lauren's done here and we can get this thing back up on the lift so what Lauren's doing over here this morning is uh, there's a few little bolts and stuff sticking down that he's gonna knock off. The bolts that are hanging down there are actually from the track for my pull-out drawer. So they're yeah. bolted all the way through down there. So he's gonna knock off some of those uh, ends because they're about need to in. Do a little bit of clean up here. Mikey's here, what you got, buddy? Yeah, all right. Mike had a change of plan. This one's not going up. It's brown, and we don't like it. We're gonna use that one instead. All right, so. All right. So y'all behave yourself. I'll be back. I am off to get my air conditioning recharged. You. Yeah. Holy damn, look at the ocean in front of me there. 
Looks like we're in the Caribbean. The tide's out, beach looks beautiful. It always feels so weird without having Cruzy Bear with me. It feels like I'm like missing a, a major part of me. All right, we're gonna fix this light here. Oh, I shut it under the hood. That's how you break the hood. I'm just gonna dangle it off the side for now. Man, I'm surprised it didn't break when I shut it. So we're gonna have to put a new bracket on here before I head out on my trip. Thankfully, right next door is a Timmy's. Let's go. Guess who's got air conditioning? Those are subscribers of mine, right? Right there. See you guys. I don't know, they're from Indiana, Idaho, not Idaho, Illinois, Idaho. somewhere. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Oh yeah, boy. We got AC, baby. I got AC. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> huh? Am I good there, buddy? Let's see what Cruzy's up to. Cruzy, hey, I heard you don't want to be outside right now, buddy. How come? Oh, it's because Cruzy loves his doggy bed. How about I buy you another one? For the shop. Damn, that's comfy, man. Daddy buy it. Daddy's gonna buy his own doggy bag too. We got air conditioning in the van, buddy. Hey, we got air conditioning. Yes, we did. What you got there, Patty? Get some phones up. Nice. Well, looky who's coming. Daddy said the T word. Hey, right, buddy, I got you, bro. You are the cutest thing in the freaking world. You know that? I mean, I came back just in time. Look at that baby. So how would you like it? Well, you want two on one? No, we'll do a burger and a bun. Okay. Ah, that's what ah. I It's better to have two burgers than one big fat one. Oh, I was that's thinking you'd I have a good patty. Inside this piece here. That's where the hole's at. Right up inside of here. It goes all the way up. Look at <laughs> Lauren told me not to do this inside, so I'm doing this inside. All the spray foam is all said and done, and as you can tell, well, it made a mess, and it's just, everything sticks together. <laughs> I got it all over my arm, and it just won't come off. I tried, even what the bottle said, use acetone. Still, it <laughs> didn't do anything. But all that stuff is all done, and I'm hoping that's the solve for all of my dust. And doing this little Band-Aid thing, I don't know if I feel good about it, because I, I don't know, I, you hear stories that this stuff's just gonna soak in water and cause rot, but then I also heard that it's like a closed cell foam and it won't hold water. Because if that gets wet up there, this is going to completely get soaked and rot all of this. So let me show you what I did. Right up in there, see it? See where, the so this is supposed to be a flat back piece. This piece is supposed to come all the way down and be tack welded to here. But there's an open hole right there. This metal is supposed to be all the way down here and tack welded to there, sealing this whole little compartment off from this side and this side. And clearly it's rotted right out. But I spray foam that hole. That hole went all the way up into the inside of my van. I could touch the wood on my walls. So there was a great big piece of insulation up in here, which wiggled its way out and fell out the bottom, opening up that whole cavity for all that dust the other day and the last couple of months. And it went in there and went all over inside of this side. You think that spray foam is gonna cause more and more and more and more and more damage? It possibly could. So I'm gonna take some of that uh, rock guard stuff that we sprayed the external fuel tanks with and spray it all up in there, hoping to create a bit of a membrane 
over top of the spray foam insulation, keeping water away from it. Hoping to band-aid that for at least a couple <laughs> more years anyway. Uh, I don't see myself doing the rust on the bottom side of this thing for at least a couple more years. It's gotten bad, like right, you can see right here, right underneath the, the coating, it's bubbling out. Like it's starting to rot underneath here. So all this stuff needs to be done from here all the way down, including all the back bracing and the supports in there. It's probably a good one week worth of work. We can grab all the metal because Ford in the USA has all that stuff. But we ain't gonna be tackling that for a couple more years now. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Just let it, let it go. It's not doing any more harm besides rotting the bottom that we're cutting out. So I'm just gonna leave it. So let's spray some rock art up in there and protect uh, what we did. It's hard to see up in here, so it's hard to spray. I got everything, I think it's gonna be awesome. Cause I think if, if I can keep the water away from it, that foam won't cause any more rust. You know, it's when that foam gets wet, that's the problem. Oh yeah, you can hear where the spray foam is. <laughs> it's thick right in there. That's the fuel tank out of my van. We're actually waiting for a part to tap the rear tank into this tank. So take a look at the top of here. That big round thing there, that's my fuel pump. So if you ever need to change a fuel pump on a Ford Econo line, the tank's gotta be pulled down in order to get that piece out of there. But take a look at the top here. So this round, see this little tiny round attachment right there with the hose sticking out of it? This is the input line for my gasoline Wobasto heater. So when it was installed, they had to put in that fitting there, attach the hose to it, and this one goes right up to my heater, pulling fuel from my main fuel tank. And on the inside of that is a line that goes down to about a quarter tank of fuel. So if I'm ever below a quarter tank of fuel, then usually my heater doesn't work. It needs to be above that line. But they do that so you can't suck your fuel completely dry while you're trying to heat yourself and not be able to start your vehicle. But yeah. That's how it's tapped in. These are little things on the van that we just never get to see, so uh, that was pretty cool. And this is how we're gonna fill both tanks. One will be for my main fuel tank, the other one will be for my auxiliary fuel tanks. And he's making a bracket here, so when we fill them up, <laughs> in the hole that was meant for one, so before there's a fuel cap right there, you turn the fuel cap, you put the nozzle in, you fill her up. So now we're dropping that down a little bit so we can have two of them in there. So they'll be down here, so there's gonna be enough room for me to come in there, open up the gas cap, take it off, and put the nozzle down to fill up tank one or the auxiliary tank two. Pretty sweet. As the days keep rolling forward here, we're getting closer and closer to finishing off the shop and us getting on the road and going traveling this year. But this year is gonna change a lot because of having the external fuel tanks will give us more fun in the backcountry than we've ever had before. So the fuel tanks will not be used for everyday regular driving. Like when I'm in towns going from city to city, I don't think packing around the extra weight that the external fuel tanks is gonna provide me with fuel with pretty much double the fuel capacity can't be can't exactly be light, probably maybe 100 liters, 120 liters of extra fuel. We'll find out when we fill them up for the first time. So from city to city, I don't think I'll be dragging around the extra weight. We'll probably just use my regular fuel tank. But what those are for are some of the bigger overland adventures that we go on when I wanna stay out in the bush longer or we have longer distances between gas stations. So. Say this year, I'm not even sure where we're going yet. Say this year we take the Dempster Highway and go all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. There's 400 and some on kilometers in before you get to the first gas station. Well, what if I want to explore between that zone? Normally, I wouldn't be able to. It would have to be straight shot to the next gas station. 
I couldn't run around and play anywhere. I don't know if there's anywhere to play, but I'm pretty sure there is. You know me, I can't stay on the straight road. I'll go this way, whoop, back on the road, go this way, whoop, back on the road. I wander a heavy amount. And I think without the extra fuel, I don't think those roads would be as fun because you get out so far and then, well, you gotta come back and get fuel. Or in that scenario, you gotta get to the gas station, be mindful to not drive any farther because 450K is a lot when you're driving down a dirt road to ask from a standard fuel tank. On regular pavement, sure, you get better fuel mileage. But when you air down those tires to reduce the puncture rate, because when you drive like the Dempster Highway or gravel roads at full tire pressure, there's a very high chance you could puncture your tire. So you drive at a little bit lower tire pressure. So that way anything sharp that hits your tire kind of gets absorbed in it. But it also crushes your gas mileage. <laughs> So having the external fuel tanks means more day out, more days out in the backcountry. So there's probably another day or so left of Lauren doing all of this fuel tank work, but let's take a look at what he's done so far. So up front here, right behind my differential is tank number one. It's mounted up here. He's still got to put one more bolt up top there, but it's bracketed right there on the bottom, super secured in there. And he just started to rough in all the fuel lines and stuff yesterday. This connects the two tanks together. And there's a great big pipe right there. I'm not sure what that's for. <laughs> and this one here, he just started mounting it up in there. It's bolted in all the way along there with a bracket that goes underneath my frame rail. This thing is solid as solid can be. We do have a great big piece of sheet metal that we're gonna put over this tank just to protect it. This front one's okay. But the back one, I mean, this is a really cool feature, actually. These supports that J5 Custom Vans built just to support my bumper and everything else actually come down perfectly below the tank. So if I were to drag anything, this is going to hit. We never planned that. It just actually worked out. Like, look it. It sits probably about an inch on the bottom side of the tank, protecting it. So we're actually putting a piece of skid plate along here too. So if I do happen to drag it or and there's a rock in the center and it comes up, it's gonna hit the skid plate and not the fuel tanks. So yeah, and how this all works is the tanks are linked together. I'll have a sending unit on my dashboard which will tell me where my fuel level is at. And then when my gas tank starts to run low, I treat the external fuel tanks as my personal gas station. I hit the switch and it fills up my regular van's gas tank from my rear tanks. Hit the switch on the dash and it just starts to pump it up here. And then I just watch my dashboard. When my dashboard says, hey, Crow, you got a full tank. I shut the switch off and look at the gauge and see how much extra fuel I have left. Pretty darn fun, pretty darn awesome. That's all I got for you. I'm done. Oh guys, I haven't shaved or showered it. I have a shower right there. It's been so busy, I haven't even used it. Smell. <laughs> Van dwellers, jeez. All right, y'all, keep your double Vs up, baby. I'll see y'all in the next one. Travel season is starting soon.